Mark Miklich, Technical Product Manager for Small Character Technologies at Squid Inc. Uh, today we are going to discuss the message screen on our Jetstream CIJ printer. This is where we can uh, create, save, and edit messages to be printed with the system. This is the home screen of the system. Uh, to access the message screen, all we're going to do is hit this button right here with the pencil and the ABC that will get us into our message screen or message editor. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do uh, when we're setting up a brand new message is we're gonna select this blank sheet of paper right here on the display. Right now what you see is the last message that was actually being worked on. We want a brand new template. So we're gonna click this. And you'll see that clears out our display. The next thing we want to do uh, when we're building a message is it's a good idea to select what's called a raster first. A raster refers to, uh, if you can visualize, uh, basically dot matrix or a grid of pixels. In, in this scenario, we're referring to, to droplets, um, but the raster refers to uh, vertical and horizontal droplets available to generate a character. So when we click this icon, we have a raster mode pop-up, and we've got a drop-down here that gives us uh, several different options for raster modes. And you'll see uh, numbers at the beginning of the raster mode selection. Um, so for example, seven by five, that refers to seven vertical droplets by five horizontal droplets to create a character. The information after that represents how many lines of that raster are gonna be available. How many different lines of text can we have? Um, a very common raster for CIJ is typically gonna be a seven by five, uh, maybe two or three lines. You'll see we have larger raster modes available all the way down to 32 by 24. Uh, so 32 drops vertical by 24 horizontal to generate a character. Um, that's the largest available. So at uh, the maximum is 32 vertical droplets that we can print with. One thing to keep in mind when you're selecting a raster, the larger the raster you go, the slower the print capabilities will be. This printer uh, or any CIJ printer prints columns in the raster one at a time. And hopefully we'll be able to zoom in here so you can see the actual columns of our characters. So um, the taller the column or the more vertical droplets we use, the longer it takes to print each column of a raster. So at the end of this video, we'll actually include uh, a snapshot of um, a spreadsheet of speed capabilities of each raster mode available. Um, so what we're gonna stick with for now is a seven by five, three line raster, just for example. So you click on your raster mode, click okay. And what you'll see on the display is three lines of seven vertical pixels or droplets uh, and horizontal is basically unlimited. Um, our, our limitation here is again vertical drops or pixels. The white bars represent the areas that we can actually uh, put our text into. The red bars represent either our inner line, so our space in between each line of text, uh, or just uh, area droplets or pixels that we are not going to be using so they're not reserved for printing okay so we're going to try to get our data inside these white bars when you're done typing in your data just click OK and you'll see it show up on our template here if you need to move your data, you have a couple ways of doing that. One is you can drag and drop. The other is we do have directional arrows uh, on the bottom right hand side of the screen. You can move the information pixel by pixel or you can even control that pixel jump. So right now it moves one pixel at a time. We can change that and increase that jump. Okay, um, one thing to point out here is 
the inner line, the red line, uh, again, is a space in between each line um, that would not be printed. So you just want to make sure your characters don't overlap that line. Just make sure they do fit inside the white space. Now that we've got our characters uh, where we want them, we'll discuss a few options uh, to customize your text up on the top of the screen. Uh, we do have a drop down for different fonts that are available. Some of these are language specific. Um, so if we were using a different language, uh, some of these would come into play. Um, if we did select a custom font for a specific language, we would have some style options uh, such as uh, bold or italicized characters. Um, after that, we have size. Um, this is a size adjustment of your characters. Um, this will either decrease size or increase size. Um, you don't want to go any larger than what's available in your raster. So we have a 7x5 raster. Really our only two options here are 7x5 or 5x5 five five character sizes. After that, we have width control. This is basically a bold function for individual elements in your message. For every one point increase, we double the amount of droplets or pixels that we're using for our text. Um, I do want to point out, if you have multiple elements in your message and you want them all to be bold, there is a bold function in print parameters that will be a global bold. It will bold everything. So. Um, if that's what you want to do, you do not need to use this width function. This is mostly for bolding just certain elements of your message. After that, we have spacing. This controls the space in between each character. Right now it's set to two. That means we have two columns of pixels or droplets in between each letter. If we decrease that, you'll see that spacing shrinks. And we can also increase it see that spacing gets larger. Also, uh, when changing the, the size of your text or the character size outside of this dropdown, you do have another option that's a little bit easier. Uh, we have this up and down arrow with an A next to it. That also will quickly change your character size. Once you've got your, your text the size that you like, um, I always recommend just left justifying everything. So move your characters to the left-hand side of the display. Um, if you don't, what the system will do is actually auto truncate or trim any of this excess white space to the left of the text. Uh, the reason we do that is it makes life a lot easier when we get to uh, print specific parameters, uh, especially the print delay. Um, Eliminating any excess white space makes the delay easier to work with or more consistent. The, the printer won't consider any of this white space as part of a delay. Um, so I just want to point that out really quick. Okay, uh, if at any time you want to edit the text on the screen, you can just double click and you'll get the same pop-up that we received when we first entered the data. Um, we can click back in here and change information at any time. Um, on the keyboard itself, you'll notice we do have a caps lock. Um, one thing to be mindful of, when you use the caps lock, it will change the top of your keyboard uh, from numbers to characters. To exit the keyboard, you do have this drop down available to you. Let me just click OK on our text. To make sure that you are uh, moving or editing the correct element in your message template, if you click on the item, you will see that there's a little blue box around your text. That just lets you know that that is what's selected. So when you go to move it or change the size, you've got the right item selected. Okay, the next item we have available to input into our message is a counter. It's this icon right here. So if we click on that, you're going to get a pop-up with uh, all your options for the counter. Uh, the very first option here is what's going to trigger that counter to increment. Right now, you only have one option, and that is whatever you're using for a print trigger. 
uh, whether it be auto printing, a photo cell, an encoder, uh, whatever your print go is, that's what's telling this counter to count up or down. Um, we will discuss later on um, why this is a drop down. There will be an additional option once we input our first counter into the message. Our next option is the start digit. Where do you want your counter to start? After that, we have a stop digit. What would you like it to count up to or count down from? This will go up to 99 million. The current digit, uh, at any time you can come in here and edit the current digit that the counter is at. What that means is you can come in, you can set this to 100,000. The counter will start from there, count all the way up to this number, and then reset to our start digit. So that can be customized as well. After that, we have our step. That's how we increment. Do you want it to go one at a time, five at a time, 10 at a time, whatever you want. Would you like it to count up or would you like it to count down? Um, padding will show zeros in place of any characters or digits that we have not counted up to yet. Um, so for example, if we start at one, but we're counting up to 99 million, we would show 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. okay? Align is, how would you like to align your count? You want it right, center, or left? Um, I'll show how that affects the counter when we put it into the message. Right now we'll leave it at right. Recall, if this is selected, if this checkbox is selected, what that means is uh, at the end of the day, when we're done printing, wherever the counter stops, uh, if we shut the system down and start it back up and uh, start production in the morning and start printing, we will pick up where we left off. The counter will pick up where it left off. If you do not check this box, if you cycle power to the system and start up the next day, it will reset to the start digit. You do also have the option to not print the counter. So if we select this, the counter will still show up in our message, it'll show up on our display, it just won't print on the product. Reset time, if we check that box, we can pick a time of day for the counter to reset to the start digit. When we're done setting up our counter, we click OK and it will show up in our message here. We just need to move it where we'd like it to be. So we have padding enabled right now. And again, this is gonna show zeros in place of any um, digits on the counter that we have not counted up to yet. So padding is zero, we click okay, show all the zeros uh, available. We double click and reselect that counter, we'll disable padding, and it won't show any of those zeros, it just shows our start digit. You'll notice we still have a blue box showing the potential amount of space that this counter could take up when it reaches its maximum count, so we know where to, uh, how much space we have in the message and to not overlap other elements onto it. Without padding selected, uh, the align will move your count digit either to the left or the right of the available field. Um, I'll move it to the right first. You'll see it starts on the right. We'll move it to the left, for example. It starts on the left. As it counts up and we add more digits, this will just start shifting over. Okay, our next option is time and date. That's this little clock icon right here. So if we click on that, we'll get this time date pop up and you'll see we have two tabs. One is date, one is time. Uh, we're gonna work with date first. So your first selection here is the date format. 
and you'll see if you click that drop down there are a lot of different options for month day um, Julian date uh, individual uh, one digit year two four a lot of different options here so we're just gonna go with a fairly common month day year which is right here after that uh, we can control our start of day so we can customize that time after that we have a day and a month offset these come in handy uh, for expiration dates for example so let's say we have a product that has a 90 day expiration you can type in that day offset I'm going to go ahead and put this into the message really quick so you can see how this shows up um, so that that will read 90 days from today's date this is dynamic this is a dynamic element this will update on its own so every day it's going to roll over and still show 90 days out from that day's date so if we click OK, we'll put that date element in the message and you'll see this is 90 days out from today's date. The month offset will do the exact same thing. Uh, it's just a larger offset. If you have a product that expires a year from now or two years from now, you can put in 12 months, 24 months, whatever it is you need to do. Okay. After that, we have a hold date value checkbox. If you select this checkbox, what will happen is even if we would normally roll over into the next calendar day or the next date, the system will hold the current date value. Um, this comes in handy if you're running product on, let's say, third shift. That production run carries over into the next day, but you still need it to show the current day's date, the system will hold that value until you deselect this box. Okay, we also have the time tab. You'll see we have a lot of different formats available down to the second. I'm just going to do uh, an hour and minute format. Um, after that, we have a couple options here. We have hold time value. If we select that box, uh, it will basically freeze the time. It will hold whatever time is currently displayed in your message. Uh, the other checkbox here is uh, just to display 2400 for midnight. So if I click OK, that will put our timestamp into our message. For both time and date options, uh, you do have a custom date time configuration here as well. Uh, this really lets you customize uh, your time or date data. Um, so this actually lets you change um, how those dynamic elements would appear in your message. Our next option is shift. So if we click on this icon, uh, we have shift creation. Um, we can have up to four shifts. I'm going to set it to three, which is fairly common. How this works is we can set a time for when each shift starts, okay? We also have a field next to each time window. We can edit what's actually gonna be printed within that time period, okay? So we could have team one, team two, for example, team three. And as long as we're within this time window, it's gonna print this data, okay? So I'm gonna click okay and put this in the message. And right now we should be on team two because we're between 6 a.m. and noon. And there's team two, okay? So again, it will print whatever you have within that window of time so you can track uh, you know, what shift or team produced a certain product. Our next option is bitmap. Okay, this allows us to actually put uh, graphics into our message. Uh, the first thing you can do here is we could actually draw our own bitmap or uh, logo or image. Um, one thing to be mindful of here is you see we can control the height and the width of our bitmap. 
Um, the height you want to make sure is going to fit within your raster. Okay, so we have a 7x5 raster that we're currently using. So the maximum height we would want for our graphic is 7 pixels or 7 droplets. Width is basically unlimited. We can make this as wide as we want. Uh, this is fairly straightforward. Um, if we just want to draw a basic graphic, you'll see we have cells here. If you click on them, you can fill them in. If you want to delete a cell that's already been drawn, just click on it again. Okay. Um, we've got a few options up here. One is we can reverse this image. So we'll print the darkened cells. We can clear it out. We can save this. Okay, so if I click save, we can name this. And click enter. That saved this bitmap to the printer. Or if you have a flash drive plugged into the system, we do have an option to save to that USB flash drive or USB disk. So if we select that, it would actually save it to our flash drive, okay? Outside of that, we can delete existing bitmaps or we can search for them. If you have uh, several, you can start typing in a file name with this search feature and it will narrow down that field. When you've got your bitmap generated, we can click insert. and it will put it in our message. Okay. Our last option here with bitmap is uh, we can open. We can either open from our local disk, which is the printer storage, or we can load from a USB flash drive. So if we have a bitmap on a flash drive, we have them plugged in, it should show up here. You can open it up and also insert that into the message. Okay, our next option is uh, barcode. Okay, um, typically when you're printing barcodes with CIJ, um, you're probably going to be using a slightly larger raster mode um, to facilitate both the barcode and potentially human readable text for that barcode. So before I put a barcode into my message, I'm gonna to go to a larger raster. Um, I'm just gonna to go to the largest one available here, 32 by 24A, and that's just gonna give me um, all 32 vertical pixels or droplets available. Um, now I'm gonna select the barcode option. You'll see we'll get this pop-up here. The white space up here is where we can type in uh, just generic alphanumeric text, okay? All right, after that we have the symbology. So what type of barcode would you like? Uh, I'm just gonna go with code 128. After that we have our height selection. So in this scenario with code 128, that's our bar height. So we can increase or decrease this to whatever we want within those 32 vertical pixels. After that, we have a border option. If you'd like a box around your barcode, you can select this. So <clears throat> you can go from no border to bind or box. If we do select a border, you can control the width of that border and also the white space in between the border and your barcode. Underneath that, we have font size selection. This is specific to whether or not you're showing the human readable text. So if you do want to show this text underneath your barcode, we would have show human readable text, uh, the checkbox selected, then we can control that font size. If you do not want the human readable to show up, just deselect this box. Okay, so if we click OK at this point, We'll put our barcode into our message field. So some more options with our barcode. Uh, we do have some insert data here on the uh, bottom right hand side. 
there's a couple different things we can do with this. Um, these are all dynamic elements. Um, so for example, if we click on date, our first option here says binding. What that means is if we have a date stamp already created in our message, uh, which I do, I'll close out here really quick. So we have this independent date stamp here, which is dynamic. Uh, if we click this drop down, you'll see we have an option for either not bound or date one. Date one represents that date stamp that's in my message. So if I select this, it's actually gonna bind my date stamp to this barcode. Um, so that date information will be included in the barcode as well as this uh, uh, alphanumeric text I've entered as well. Outside of binding, you can also select not bound and you can customize a date format specifically for the barcode only. And you'll notice we have a lot of the same uh, date formatting options that we have in our, our standard date stamp. Okay. So I went back to binding. You'll see that date one has now shown up in my barcode data. If I click OK, you'll see my barcode has increased dramatically in size and that date is now in my barcode as well. Our next option here is uh, an item called the USB text data. Um, what this does is allows us to print data uh, from a text file on a USB flash drive that's plugged into the printer. So we can link that file to our message template. Uh, we're gonna have a, a separate video. We have a dedicated video just for this feature, um, but that's what that's there for. Our next option is just a copy function. So if we select an element in our message that we need to duplicate, we can click this copy tab and click where you'd like that duplicate to show up in your message. And the next icon here is paste. So you'll see we copied Jetstream and it showed up here. Our next option is delete. So this uh, large X is a delete function. If you want to get rid of any element in your message, click on it once to select it and then click delete and it will remove it from your template. Our next option is to save our message. Okay, so when we click that save icon, uh, what you're gonna see here is a save file pop-up. Um, first thing we wanna do is title our file name or our message. So we'll name this Jetstream Training. And we've got a few options here uh, before we save it, or a couple options. Uh, one is, uh, where would you like to save the message? Local, it's showing that we're saving to local right now. That's the printer message storage. Or on the bottom here, we have this drop down. We could go to USB disk. Uh, if we had a USB flash drive plugged into the machine, we could save it to that instead. So we're just gonna leave it at local. And if we click save, it's gonna save the message to the printer. Uh, one thing to mention when we do that is uh, right now we're just saving the message template um, to the machine storage. We're actually having zero impact. Uh, if we were printing right now, uh, saving the message has zero impact on the job that's currently printing. Okay, we're just saving it. We're not telling it to actually print this message yet. Okay, so if we click save, message is now saved in the printer. Uh, three other options we have here with message saving or saving the file. Uh, BCD, uh, if we check that box, um, it will save messages uh, specific to a BCD function. Uh, that will be covered in an entirely different video. Um, after that we have a delete option. We can select any of these templates and delete them. Or if you've got a large database of messages, you can click search and then start typing in a name and it will narrow down that field. Our next option, uh, we've got this folder here that allows us to open any existing template in the printer. So 
for example, I've opened our training message or reopened it. Um, so at any time we can access any message in the system and start editing that message. When you're loading a file in your editor, uh, you do also have an option um, to load that file from a USB flash drive. Um, so down here, right now we're set to local disk, which is the printer storage. If we go to USB, you'll see any messages that were already saved uh, to the USB. So if we select that and click open, we'll then bring that message in. Uh, you then can save this to the printer. Um, so let's say you have multiple systems that you're setting up. All of them are gonna be running uh, basically the same messages. All you have to do is create them on one printer. You can put them on a flash drive. This is how you import them in and then just make sure you save them to the machine. Okay, I had mentioned that when you're done creating a message template and you save it, uh, it's just saving it in the system but not actually telling it to print that message. Again, that way we can sit and create messages without having any impact on production. If you do want the printer to print the message that you've just created and saved, we would click our last icon here and that's download data for printing. So that would actually download this message uh, to be printed. So if we click yes, we have now told the system that this is what we're gonna be printing. And if we were to navigate back to the home screen, which is what this large arrow is for, you'll see that that is now our job to be printed. If we do edit a saved message, let's say I just get rid of an element here, um, I, you can go directly to telling the system to print this information without resaving. If you do that, the system will automatically prompt you to save those changes anyway. So it's a little bit of a shortcut here. On the bottom of our display in our message editor, um, you'll see we've got some additional information here. Uh, this is just telling us uh, how many pieces of each uh, type of element we have in our message. So we have one piece of static data that never changes, that's our jet stream here. Um, time and date, we've got two elements. We've got a, a time stamp and a date stamp. We've got one bitmap, for example. So um, just gives you an idea of, of how the message is composed. And then um, we do have an X and Y coordinate. That's telling you uh, for the item you have selected where the top left-hand corner is, what the coordinate is of that item. Lastly, on the bottom here, the very bottom, it just shows us the file name uh, if we've saved this file. So it just tells us what template we're currently working on. Uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this on our CIJ or other products, uh, please subscribe. Uh, to our YouTube channel. Thanks.